Chapter 4 The Twelve Golden Rules Do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command. And better tools will be found as you go along. Napoleon Hill It's Friday afternoon and time is running out. Before the deadline of five o'clock, you're frantically working on a task while silently blaming yourself for procrastinating earlier. What led to this? What happened? And why did you lose concentration? In addition to the unnecessary preparation, the coffee breaks, and the hours spent on other work that you might have safely delegated to next week, there were also the hours that you wasted rereading emails and monitoring social media. Sounds familiar? In that case... You are not alone. Many of us fall into the trap of procrastination. In reality, 95% of us delay things to some degree, according to researcher and speaker Piers Steele. First, accept it. Acknowledge your procrastination. It's okay. You might be delaying a task because you had to rearrange your priorities. You aren't necessarily procrastinating, if you are short delaying an important task for a genuinely good cause. However, if you start to postpone indefinitely or change your priorities to avoid doing something, then you probably are. You need to recognize whether you are genuinely procrastinating or it is slowly becoming your habit. I suggest you double-check yourself if you have the below habits. It's possible that you may be procrastinating. Instead of moving forward with the crucial tasks currently on your list, you are filling your time with unimportant activities that other people ask you to complete. You start to work on a high-priority task and then go off to check your social media posts. Despite the fact that it is a crucial task, you leave it onto your to-do list for a long time. You take on low-importance jobs all day long. You often check your social media accounts or read emails several times without deciding what to do with them, or perhaps you merely browse the web. You typically wait until you are in the right mood or until the perfect time to start a project. You are delaying your important tasks just because you have the limiting belief that you need someone to be there to handhold you. Next, recognize your why factor. After acknowledging your procrastination, you must first understand why it is happening. Recognize your why factor behind it. Only then can you start to deal with it. For example, do you avoid a particular work because you find it tedious or unpleasant? If so, take action to get it done as soon as possible so you may concentrate on the parts of your job that you enjoy more. Procrastination may result from a lack of organization. Organized people are able to overcome it because they use effective timetables and prioritize to-do lists. Even if you are well organized, a task can make you uncomfortable. Perhaps you put it off and find comfort in working on tasks that you know you are capable of finishing because you are unsure of your abilities and scared about failing to do challenging jobs. Unbelievably, some people are more afraid of achievement than of failure. They believe that if they are successful, they will be flooded with requests to take on more responsibilities. Surprisingly, perfectionists are also procrastinators. They frequently choose to forego performing a task they don't feel competent to complete, rather than perform it imperfectly. Poor decision-making is another significant factor in procrastination. If you are unsure of what to do, you'll probably put off taking action out of concern that you could make a mistake. One thing to keep in mind is that procrastination can be a sign of serious underlying health problems for certain people, making it more than just a bad habit. For instance, procrastination is linked to ADHD, OCD, anxiety, and depression symptoms. An American Psychological Association study found that procrastination can lead to severe stress and sickness. 
Therefore, if you have persistent or chronic procrastination, you should seek the guidance of a qualified specialist before taking any action on your own. In future lessons, you'll learn about tools that aid in task prioritization and deadline management. These will help you healthily tackle your procrastination. Finally, handle it by following the 12 golden rules. Say yes to anti-procrastination tools and techniques. As you now know, procrastination is a habit or behavior pattern that is deeply rooted in us. This implies that it won't likely be easy to break overnight. Try as many of the tactics listed below as you can to increase your chances of success because habits only stop being habits when you stop practicing them. Number one, recognize, accept, and forgive yourself for your past procrastinations. Self-forgiveness for procrastinating can reduce future procrastination. According to a study done by the Carleton University Department of Psychology, they looked at the relationship between forgiving yourself for a particular incident of procrastination and future procrastinating on the same task. Measures of procrastination and self-forgiveness were completed by a sample of 119 first-year university students, 49 men and 70 women, before each of two midterm exams in an introductory psychology course. The findings showed that procrastination in getting ready for the next exam decreased among students who expressed a high degree of self-forgiveness for putting off studying for the first exam. Negative effect. Negative effect served as a mediator in this relationship. So increased self-forgiveness reduced procrastination by lowering negative effect. Number two, focus on doing, not delaying. If you are feeling stuck, just commit to finishing one little task, any task, and write it down. Complete it, then treat yourself such as an ice cream or a coffee from your favorite coffee shop. Be sure to take note of how satisfying it is to finish. Only include tasks you can fully commit to on your schedule or to-do list. If you do so, be sure to finish them. By doing so, you will gradually regain the confidence in yourself that you will really do what you say you will, which so many procrastinators have lost. Number 3. Swiss cheese your biggest tasks, that is, divide and conquer. It's a good idea to divide up difficult jobs into manageable chunks. A variation on this is to devote short chunks of time to a large task. Then complete as much as possible in that time with little anticipation of the results. For instance, try taking notes on ideas that come to mind regarding your task within a paper for approximately 10 minutes or skim through a lengthy reading just to get an idea about the key points. When you do this repeatedly on a large assignment, you will progress, get momentum, have less work to do to finish the task, and it won't look as massive because you have made holes in it, like Swiss cheese. In other words, completing the assignment will be more straightforward now because you have already begun and overcome some of the challenges. Number four. Set deadlines. Set deadlines for finishing each portion of the assignment after you have divided it into smaller chunks. Having multiple smaller short-term goals rather than a single larger long-term goal will increase your chances of success. It is less overwhelming and easier to stay motivated. Reward yourself each time you accomplish a short-term objective. Setting these more manageable objectives allows you to avoid last-minute panics as a big deadline approaches. Number 5. Convert your limiting beliefs into empowering ones. Our thoughts and emotions have great power. It may be easier to take action if you talk to yourself positively and encouragingly and remind yourself of your recent wins. But it might be challenging to escape the avoidance cycle when you are stuck in a negative, limiting mindset. Your limiting beliefs prevent you from moving forward or keep you where you are. You can develop the self-awareness and self-confidence necessary to create empowering beliefs and inspire positive, 
purposeful behavior by letting go of those unhelpful, limiting thoughts and changing your mindset. For instance, the words need to and have to imply that you are still stuck in your limiting beliefs. You might even feel powerless, and that could even lead to self-sabotage. However, the phrase, I choose to, conveys that you have empowering beliefs, which can make you feel more in control of your workload. Number six, limit your distractions. You would have noticed that sometimes you tell yourself, I'll take care of these other little things first, then I'll work on the major task. However, these additional small things frequently fuel the procrastination cycle. Even though you seem to be working extremely hard and getting a lot done, you are actually putting off the most important tasks. Also consider this scenario. You're currently working on a project that needs your complete attention. You're doing well and are focused. Suddenly, your phone starts to ring. You attend the call and it breaks your flow. The call lasts less than a minute because it's just a telemarketer. But then you quickly check your messages, SMS, Facebook, WhatsApp, and emails and decide to text your friend. Two, five, maybe ten minutes later, after the initial interruption, it's harder to concentrate when you eventually return to work. You pause to look at funny Instagram or YouTube reels, check your email once more, and browse a few news websites. As a result, you discover that you are making more errors. That said, it's not impossible to focus, so it becomes crucial that you avoid distractions by turning off your social media, cell phone, email, and other devices. Remember that distractions from within might also interfere with your capacity to focus. Number seven, make unpleasant tasks pleasant. Generally, unpleasant or challenging tasks don't stimulate your brain enough to make you feel motivated to do them. If this is the cause of your procrastination, consider how you may make the task more pleasant. You might start by making things more likable instead of accepting the unpleasant things in life as given. You can achieve this by taking a pragmatic approach and eliminating or reducing unpleasant chores. You can also accomplish this by using a psychological strategy to change your feelings about unpleasant tasks. Here are a few examples. Become a contest with yourself. How many pages can you write in 25 minutes? Use a timer to help you. There is a powerful time management method called Pomodoro Technique. You can use that here. I'll give more details about this technique in our future lessons. Think about how pleasant it will be for you to feel like doing what is right for you. Write down all the advantages you can imagine, see yourself achieving your goals in the future, and daydream about how happy your new life will make you. This will raise its value to you and increase the value of your effort. It's also important to acknowledge that we frequently exaggerate how painful the activity is. So try it out. You might discover that it's actually not as horrible as you initially believed. While working, listen to music to make it more enjoyable. If you are procrastinating about cleaning your room, consider how much better you'll feel in a clean room and the health advantages of physical exercise. Do you know that you are setting a positive example for your children by room cleaning? Have a prize ready for you when you're done. To make a task more fun, Consider highlighting the adverse effects of putting it off. What will happen, for instance, if you don't finish the task? How might it impact your individual, group, or company goals? How can it affect your relationship with others? You might believe, for instance, that this career path is best for you. Thus, you need to work hard in class and achieve high marks. Or, if this relationship is right for you, you should be more affectionate and use more effort to meet the other person's expectations. To make your task pleasant, focus on the long game. According to research, impulsive persons are more prone to put off their tasks because they are interested in immediate rewards. Evaluate the long-term advantages of finishing the assignments to combat this. Could it, for instance, 
impact your yearly performance evaluation, a year-end bonus, or the next salary hike? Number 8. Ask for assistance when you need it and seek out training. Are you putting off a task because you lack the necessary skills? For instance, studies have shown that while procrastination and worry are common among students taking challenging courses, preparation can help decrease these feelings. If this is your case, why not learn more about it? You could accomplish this by signing up for a formal training program. Alternatively, you may achieve this more flexibly by asking a friend to do it for you or viewing a video online. Remember that resistance vanishes when you know how to do something and taking action becomes easy. Number 9. Start every day by eating an elephant beetle. One of the best anti-procrastination strategies I use in my life is to eat an elephant beetle every morning. To put it another way, Finish the things you find the least enjoyable and most feared first. You'll be more productive and have the rest of the day to focus on the tasks that you enjoy doing. Number 10. Transfer to another person. Task delegation. Sometimes learning a new skill on your own can be motivating. Sometimes it makes sense to assign work to someone with the necessary skills. For instance, you are not required to learn how to fix your computer hardware. You can take it to the shop where skilled technicians work. Don't think you have to handle everything on your own. It has been proved that task delegation improves efficiency, productivity, and time management. Number 11. An alternative approach. A different strategy is to practice the art of delay, that is, active procrastination. According to a study from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, Active procrastination or purposefully delaying starting something so you may focus on other essential tasks might increase your sense of stress and motivation to complete tasks. If you are a person who does best under pressure, this technique may be especially effective for you. However, if you want to purposefully put off doing something, ensure not to put excessive, unpleasant, or undesired pressure on your coworkers. Number 12. Of course, don't procrastinate in consulting with your doctor. If necessary, don't hesitate to consult a medical practitioner or a mental health specialist about your procrastinating issues. Therapy and medication can play a significant role in your treatment plan. Although taking medicine won't stop you from procrastinating, it can help you focus and make activities a bit simpler to start. In our future lessons, you will learn more approaches, techniques, and strategies to handle your procrastination gracefully. These tools and techniques have helped millions of people, including me. So if you implement them, you can see the difference in your behavior. Sounds good? So let's go and learn them!